it happened the way it happened. Everybody saw the video. So, um, oh yeah, the, the uh, conflict that popped off, all right? So it was what it was. The scriptures say, show, show my people their sins, all right? It, it's not always that easy to do, and it, it sometimes it's really abrasive, right? We all know that. But Karat is what were you saying in the two hour and 30 minute long pandering of whatever y'all were doing? You said, so she kind of had some of her body uncovered. Bro, she looked like she was getting ready to jump on a pole, man. Why are you, why are you, yo, you, that's delusion, man. So, you know, that happened, Escal it escalated, escalated. But let me ask you this. Who threw their body between them and y'all? Go watch the video, man. Who threw their body between them and y'all? There's no more, better bro love of a brother or a friend that he, that he lay his life down. All right, who physically interjected their body when things started to get real close? Man, I had real genuine love for y'all, man. And the Most High revealed everything to me. All right? I'm talking about them two girls in Taos and I was just was checking them out, man. I told them they need to cover their body. They out here tempting strange men. And they said, F you and flip me off. You must have missed that, huh? All right? So now who can't take a rebuke? How mad are you? Like, like, I can just imagine, bro, because y'all have showed yourself to be so carnal. Like, there's no reason to treat your brother the way you treated me, man. And I was being nothing but honest and genuine to you. You took my, you took my meekness for weakness. You took my charity as me being a serpent. Bruh, no, man. And you called, bruh. Bruh. Yo. When y'all started talking about my children, man, you are not taking your, your 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 brother's infirmities into consideration, not at all. Okay. Let me get this. This is Mark chapter nine and verse forty-two. It says, and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and were cast into the sea. Okay, so think about that. These little ones is more than just children, man, because we all little ones out here, you know? And what's it say in uh, Psalms? Okay, let me get this. It's cold out here. It's cold, 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 cold out here. Right, Pages cold. All right. This is Psalms. Ninety. This is Psalms ninety. No, no, I need a different one. Hold up. Salakia. So cold out here, I can't even t touch these pages, man. This is Psalms 76. Yo, I'm having so much trouble with this. Oh, no way. What is this? All right, you know what? I'm just going to look it up over here, man. I don't know. I'm having trouble with the Roman numerals in the king in the uh, 1611. This is Psalms 76 and 6. It says. At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and the horse are cast into a deep, a dead sleep. Thou, even thou, art to be feared. And who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? So you guys did all that prideful stuff and then uh, used the name of the Lord, man. 
that's not what that's not what Yahweh Shai is about, man. Verse 8. Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. When God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth, Salah. All the meek of the earth, Salah. Okay? Okay. So like I said, you know, what do I have what do I have to fear? I've already been threatened, talking about watch my back. Don't come around. You know, we live in close, it's, everything's in close proximity. Like, I'm a man of the Lord, man. You guys need to really check yourself. And I got no choice to do this. The Lord told me to go hard on him. And I'm not going to drop to y'all level and, and lie on you. All of this is a true testimony, man. All right. All right, with that and my, my rebuke about, you know, Karatna's our back page. Ma's talking about, can we get some girls tonight? Then he says, we can get some drinks. You know, that that's that's that was off-putting. And the Lord just, you know, he, he logged into my brain and then just had me keep on going. I'm going to bring out my dream too. All right? But with that, I'm just not going to just rebuke you and just leave you leave you, leave you hopeless. Okay? This is uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Because the war, the, the war is against the spirit and the flesh, right? It's a spiritual war, okay? And you know, my, my face never got hot once when I was looking at y'all video, man. But my guts was twisted up. Because it was so hard to watch, man. Even if it wasn't even about me, it's like, dang. All right? There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with, with the temptation also make you a way to escape, that ye, ye may be able to bear it. You know what I mean? So, hey, <clears throat> repent, man. Repentance is our way now, right? So... You know, you can't escape, man. You can't escape. And, hey, I had my sin fall out in the midst of the congregation. It was one brother there. It was Yacoba and I. Uh, I don't know. It was like a year ago or something. I had looked at some pornography on my phone, right? And I, I, I repented, whatever. I felt guilty about it. But it, it didn't really seat hard on me, you know, the shame or the guilt. So I'm with your call, but one day I went to go show him something on my phone. We was chopping up in my in my dining room. I went to go show him something, and in the browser, in the browser bar up top, it was you know a a, a website that was not in not in good taste, right? And uh, that was my sin falling out in the midst of the congregation. And later on, I was overwhelmed with shame and weakness. And I let that brother know that, hey, that's this is what happened. And, you know, it, I, I, I have no inclination to go back to that. You know what I mean? Lord willing, that temptation does not creep up on me ever, ever, ever again after that. Because that, that, that made me feel disgusted at myself. All right. So where was I at here? Uh, here we go. James. Five. And... 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall rise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Okay? So I prayed for y'all that the Lord strip your pride and vanity off of you. So you can see what you're doing, man. You broke the second highest commandment that our Lord Yahweh Shah gave us. By doing this to your brother, man. And you know, Masha, Nabaka Allah, Mata, uh, the rest of you bros, like this is aimed mainly at those three heads. Mazabakyad, Karatnaza, and Yakalba. Okay? Because they're supposed to be the leaders, man. 
but they are seem seemingly holding the truth and unrighteousness. Like you can't be wicked in your day to day in the world and then think you can just go push camp and then that covers your sins, man. That's the same thing as as, as the the priest that put off Aaron. That was no priest at all. They was being wicked and then sacrificing, thinking they was good. The Lord destroyed them. Okay. Confess your faults one to another. You know, I was there for a reason. I was confessing my my faults to y'all. Okay, that's what brethren is for. Okay, let me get this real quick. This is Numbers 16, 21. It says, separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. Okay. And that was talking about uh, the house of uh, Korah getting impatient and accusing Moses that they had led them out here to get killed. You know, false accusations against Moses. All right, I'm going to jump down to verse 26. It says, And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all of their sins. The Most High revealed to me what was going on. Because I saw Tazawa's video bef before I came into the camp. And why, why the Lord just log that in the back of my head and then bring it out now? Okay, because y'all need to be rebuked for your wickedness. We don't have time to mess around, man. The hour is close. All right, the signs are all around us, man. Got to stop with the wickedness, man. And it, I almost don't even need to do the, the, this video because y'all indemnified yourselves in, the, in your conduct. But the Lord told me, go hard on them. Go hard on them. So I don't have no choice. Okay? I'm not going to let hell swallow me up like Jonah. Okay? Uh, let me get this in. Uh, this rock. 27. Book of Sirach 27, starting at chapter 5, it says, The furnace proveth the potter's vessel, so the trial of man is in his reasoning. The fruit declareth if the tree have been dressed, so is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. Praise no man before thou hearest him speak, for this is the trial of men. If thou followest righteousness, thou shalt obtain her and put her on as a glorious long robe. The birds will resort unto their like, so will the truth return to them that practice in her. As the lion lieth in wait for the prey, so sin for them that work iniquity. The discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom, but a fool changes as the moon. If thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time, but be continually among men of understanding. The discourse of fools is irksome. That's a good way to put it. You know, I was irked by it, but you wasn't offending me. And their sport is in the wantonness of sin. Their sport is in the wantonness of sin. The talk of him that sweareth much maketh the hair stand upright, and their brawls make one stop his ears like nobody wanted to hear that i can't believe i put myself through it man but the lord made me do it verse 15 the strife of the proud is blood shedding and their revelings are grievous to the ear okay that was grievous to the ear man whoso discovereth secrets loseth his credit so you guys let me say that again. Whoso discovereth secrets loseth his credit. So here you are exposing things that I came to you in confidence when I needed help, when I needed to be built up. Okay? And, and, and let me read it again. 
Whoso discovereth secrets loseth his credit. So you guys expose confident things that I came to you in confidence with. Okay? And shall never find friend to his mind. Love thy friend and be faithful unto him. But if thou berayest his secrets, follow no more after him. You had a great friend in me, Akium. Akium. Love thy friend and be faithful unto him. But if thou berayest his secrets, follow no more after him. For as a man hath destroyed his enemy, so hath thou lost the love of thy neighbor. As one that letteth a bird go out of his hand, so hast thou let thy neighbor go, and shall not get him again. I forgive y'all, but I do not want to see y'all. Not because I'm wishing anything ill or I'm going to attack you, man. But you guys have become disgusting to me. And again, aimed at them three heads. Which the, which the, hey, I'm, let me just continue on. Has lost the love of thy neighbor. 19, as one that letteth a bird go out of his hands, so hast thou let thy neighbor go and shall not let, find him, and shall not get him again. Follow after him no more, for he is too far off. He is as a roe escaped out of, out of the snare. And I was in a snare. I was in a legit snare in that camp. Okay, you had y'all, the spirit that, that y'all operating under had me looking at people differently. People that are at peace with me. Okay, I probably still got more repenting to do for that. I'm gonna jump down to verse 25. It says, This is Sirach 27 and 25. It said, Whoso casteth a stone on high, casteth it on his own head, and a deceitful stroke shall make wounds. These were all deceitful strokes, bro. Y'all need to repent. Like, you didn't, I, you, you didn't offend me. Like, you offended the Lord. Okay? Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. I could just see y'all. Y'all was just digging a pit. Like, yeah, we're going to put Kafash in this pit. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. And he that setteth a trap shall be taken therein. He that worketh mischief, it shall fall upon him, and he shall not know whence it cometh. Mockery and reproach are from the proud. Pride cometh before a fall. Y'all need to repent. But vengeance, as a lion, shall lie in wait for them. They that rejoice at the fall of the righteous shall be taken in the snare. Maz, you over there laughing. Y'all had no idea what y'all were doing, man. Y'all know the scriptures. Y'all know the precepts. And anguish shall consume them before they die. All right, look. Uh, 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 let me, let me, get one more verse. Malice and wrath, even these are abominations, and the sinful man shall have them both. All right. That was the book of Sirach, chapter 27. All right, now it's got some precepts I got. I'm going to go through here. All right. This is <clears throat> Salaki. All right, this is Romans. <clears throat> this is Romans 1 and 18. It says... For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So yeah, y'all know all the precepts and everything. Y'all got the truth, but you're not holding it righteously. You're mishandling the word. This truth and this word is the wife of my youth, and you're mishandling it. Yo, and, and you, you showed your fruit to everybody, man. Rotten fruit. Bitter. All right, I'm going to jump down to verse 25. Actually, I'm going to hit 22 real quick. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Oh, oh, no, you know what? 
Let me just read down through 25. You know what? Uh, Romans 1 and 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it to, unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Godhead. So that they are without excuse. You guys don't have no excuse for what you did, man. Other than delusion, the Lord had blinded you, so you just go do that. Man, the Lord might be setting you up for destruction, man. Again, just getting the blood off my hands, man. Y'all standing there bloody, man. Your hands is all bloody. Threats, breaking the second highest commandment that the Lord gave us. All right, uh, 21. Because that they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men and to the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things, okay? Yo, what's, what, what separates men from the beasts of the field? Empathy. Empathy. And some people lack empathy. So they might as well be in league with the beasts of the field. That's what this is talking about. Let me, let me read 20, verse 23 again. Romans 1, 23. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. <clears throat> 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Karatza back page, Karatza back page. Yo, Karatza, can we get some girls tonight? That's so off, bro. There's no way you can explain that away. Show me the... No, bro. No. 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. See, y'all up there in all your pride, man. You turn yourselves into the most high. No, man. And y'all call me Esau? Come on, man. You're tripping, man. Again, I try to respectfully bow out the camp, and this is what happened. Men of the Lord. All right. This is this is Jeremiah, verse twenty-three. Starting at verse one. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. I'm going to jump down to verse 4. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. So we could have talked things out, you know. I, I, you could have been like, oh, he wants to respectfully bow out. That's fine, yeah. But look at what the Lord had, had, had done here. And now got me here telling me go hard on him. Go hard on him. How am I supposed to say no to that? How am I supposed to hold my tongue against that? Um... Let me jump down to verse 9. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his unholiness. Okay? When I, when this happened, bro, my, my legs were shaking a little bit. My guts were all turning around inside. You know, this explains how I felt right there. For the land is full of adulterers because of swearing the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their course is evil and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them. Even, ye, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria that prophesied against, or that, or Salakia. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and cursed my people, Israel. It caused my people, Israel, to err. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem hor a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evil doers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. 
Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profane is going forth into the land. Okay? So that's why when I said, when, when we was in the harbor, you said, it's like a child. Mazabakia said, you said, Mazabakia, it's a trial by fire. You got burned through him. She was one you like talking about women. And I said, don't twist the scripture like that. You were like, I thought you was one of us. Because y'all one of these guys. Y'all one of these guys, man. It's cold out here. All right? And, you know, I feel bad for you guys because, you know, I was looking up to you guys. Like, y'all was men of the Lord, man. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 2 and 26. It says, For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy okay you guys have wisdom and you have knowledge but where is your joy okay where is your joy you guys are lacking joy okay and that should be a telltale sign that you got to do something different number one starting with repenting for god giveth to a man that is that is good in the sight or salakia for god giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy what joy are you get you getting joy out of car carnality carnal lust but to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before the lord this also is vanity and vexation of the spirit okay so uh, your trials man your trials man Y'all y'all got somebody pulled a gun on y'all one night after camp. Like that don't happen to men of the Lord, right? And then Mazabak y'all got banked by them same guys, man. He was stalking him at his job, man. That's the heaping up of that's the gathering, the heaping up of the travail, man. You gotta see that. And you also gotta see your lack of joy. So I don't have joy. What am I doing? I got knowledge, I got wisdom, but where's my joy? Okay, something's missing. You're still off, man, if you can't find that joy. All right. Whew. All right, this is the book of Matthew. Chapter 22. And 36. Master, which is the great, great commandment? Which is the great commandment in the law? Yahweh said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first, com first and great commandment, and the second commandment is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay? So what you guys did to me, man, you guys broke this second commandment. Repent. Repent, repent. All right. All right, this is the book of Surat. It's got to be 30 degrees out here. This is the book of Surat, chapter 2, and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thine heart to write and constantly endure, and make not haste in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a lower estate. So all the signs that the Lord is showing you, like, like, like your wrath that, that you have against the white man, hey, the, and, and Esau, okay? Like, that, Mazabakia, that came out at your job, and you got fired, you would think that you would be like, oh, well, something happened with that, that's not my fault, blah, 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 man. No, nah, man, that guy might have been being a devil, but yo, think about this. You remember that movie with, uh, with Nelly? Oh, look, Adam Sandler's in that movie. That's one of the names that y'all called me. The Longest Yard with, with Nelly, right? Remember he in the library and he, he's doing something with the books and then the big uh, so-called white guys come in and they start doing things, calling him a nigger. 
and he just smiled and just took it cheerfully, man. That's the. Is, I hate to use Nelly as an example for anything because he 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 he's uh, you know leading people down down a wrong route with all his wickedness, but that role he played in that scene in that movie. That yo, that's the way you gotta take it, man. Take it in great cheer, man. It's like you know, I got. I got, the law came down on me, and I wasn't looking at it as, oh, damn, Esau. Yeah, he lied on me and did all this other stuff and, and set me up and was talking smooth to me and trying to coerce me into, you know, getting information out of me that I, I, I shouldn't have given him, and I didn't give him. But at the end, when it was all done, I'm looking at it as, well, what is what work is the Lord doing in me? Okay? I can only be mad at myself. All right, we get Sirach 21 and 20. Salakia 21 and 20 says, A fool lifteth up his voice with laughter, but a wise man doth scarce smile a little. Okay? A foolish man, or uh, Salakia, a fool, a fool lifteth up his voice with laughter. So Maz, you over there laughing during the, the, the breaking of the second commandment and then calling on the power of the Lord. Like, you guys, you guys I don't know. I didn't understand what kind of underlying wickedness was going on with y'all. But, like, even this situation right here, this, this is, y'all are completely off. And, I, yo, I would be jumping down on my knees right now if I was y'all. And begging for the Lord's forgiveness, man. But I don't see, I don't know how many warnings y'all got. Like, is this the first warning on this that y'all got? You call, but man, when it rains, it pours, right? When it rains, it pours, right? Ock. All right, uh, this is Proverbs. Ooh, the sun coming out a little bit. All oh, praises. This is Proverbs 6. And 16. I mean, and this is milk, man. You guys know this stuff. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, even seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Talking about, look, don't come around here. Watch your back. I'm going to break your nose. That's the kind of stuff that you're saying about me, man. A proud look, a lying tongue. Y'all lied on me, man. Y'all twisted up all this stuff that, that we went through. To make me look like I'm some kind of devil. Which is fine, because y'all done proved yourselves to be some scribes and Pharisees, man. <laughs> Alright? And it needs to be called out. Y'all can't cannot continue on operating like this. And if the Lord used me for it, then fine. I'm an agent of your how about Shimmy How Shai. Okay? A lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. And a heart that deviseth wicked imagination. And look, don't add sin to sin and come looking for me now, man. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that deviseth wicked, wicked imaginations. And I can just imagine, if you guys aren't taking this the right way, the, the carnality that's coming out, man. Your unholy conversation is coming out according to this, man. Deviseth wicked imaginations. Just a couple weeks ago, Karate's out in my backyard talking about he want to rape somebody. He want to rape a he, some heathen woman. You know, we, we, we around a fire the other night at my house. Your was like, I just want to throw an Edomite on the fire. So I could just imagine, bro. I could just imagine, bro, what you come of the stuff that you guys are talking about, man. But take this the right way, man. This is the Lord at work here with y'all. Everything secret will be made manifest, right? Like, you guys really helped me out with the precepts, with the precepts you was using against me. All right, feet that be swift in running to mischief. You know, first thing you want to do is threaten me, Karatza. You know, I seen you and your brother go 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 into it like that, man. That was feet swift to go do mischief. Y'all threatening each other back and forth, man. That's your brother. You you love your brother. That's your blood, man. All right, a false witness that speaketh lies. All them lies y'all perpetuated on me, man. Yasha Allah can see who who's the devil here. 
and he that soweth discord among the brethren. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother, bind continually upon thy heart, bound them upon thy neck. Okay? And then well, what else has we got going on in here? I already brought out James. Uh, John 16 33, still be of good cheer, man. Let me, let me get that. John 16 and 33. And this is the words of Yahweh Shai. It says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Okay? Our perfect big brother. All right, this is the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 3. All right, for I say through grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Okay? So instead of, you know, letting the most high deal with me, whatever, if I'm trying to respectfully bow out the camp, which was my words, by the way. And then, look, on that same day that I tried to respectfully bow out the camp, I had some unleavened bread that I made. The brother you call, but has some wine. And we in here, we waiting for his car to get done, worked on. And we're eating the unleavened bread, man. We're sharing wine together. And this is after the conversation of, I'd like to bow, respectfully bow out the camp. Okay, then all of a sudden, you know, I got Karatazah threatening me once he bring the word back. Mazabakia threatening me when they bring the word back. Um, and then I'm trying to let you call, but no, hey, the brothers are threatening me, man. He's like, Kevin, stop hitting me. Whatever, man. The Most High is going to deal with y'all, man. Y'all need to repent. All right? All right, so, uh, oh, where was I at? Romans 12 and 3? Yeah, any man to think more highly than he ought, man. Thinking that you all so high and mighty that you in some seat of judgment that you able to cast these judgments down on me, but you did it falsely, man. All that stuff, it was just lie after lie after lie after lie, except for that I'm an agent, because I am an agent. You know, who can't take a rebuke, all right? Who can't take a rebuke? All right, we, Mazabakiad, we was rebuking you one time for wearing your heart on your sleeve, and you started breathing heavy, got up, started wailing on my punching bag, bare knuckles, until your knuckles were bleeding, man. I got blood, your blood in my punching bag now. But hey, if I'm an agent of CIA or FBI or whatever, hey, I got your DNA, which I'm not an agent of none of that. I'm an agent of, of the Most High, and he sent me here for this purpose, man. Prophets come to destroy wickedness with their words. And I'm not saying I'm a prophet, but the Most High gave me a dream that revealed everything which I'm getting ready to bring out. All right. And wolves in sheep's clothing. Who's this? Romans, Romans 15 and chapter 1 says 